Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to a tech edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week, we're joined by Alex from Podcaster. Hi, Alex. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. At 1 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> When we scheduled the show, we were under the impression that you were on the West Coast. So we felt kind of bad today when we realized that you were uh, on the East Coast. (laughs) It's no problem. I'm happy to do it. Yay. Well, we're happy to have you here. So do you want to start off by telling us where Podcaster is and then tell us a little bit about it? Uh, Sure. Well, you can find Podcaster uh, by going to podcaster.fm. Um, basically podcaster is an iPhone web app and, uh, I created it for, uh, being, you know, so I was able to stream some of my favorite podcasts to my iPhone without having to sync with iTunes. Now, why would anyone want to do that? Like (laughs) me, with my new iPhone. Well, you know, I, uh, probably like most people, I sync to my home computer. And so when I go to work and I leave at 5 o'clock at night, there's a lot of podcasts that came out by that time, and I don't have them for my drive home. So that was the main reason. I wanted to have new podcasts to listen to on my way home from work. I know somebody in my house that uh, maybe falls into that exact same category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and usually, like, syncing takes forever. You know, sometimes you're waiting to get all those podcasts down and you know, just to download and then sync, and you're like, ah, da, 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 if you're in a hurry. It does take a long time, and, you know, I, I like using my podcast client, the built-in podcast client on the iPhone, but I just can't get all my podcasts when I want them, right, when the new episodes come out. So that was the main reason that I built Podcaster. Correct. Um, I think... I'm, I'm quoting Dr. Normal here, but earlier he said it's a very simple and elegant solution to a cumbersome problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could uh, probably go search around the web for all the podcasts that are there, but I just wanted one place that I could have all my podcasts that I like, and they would get updated automatically, keep a track of all the podcasts that I've listened to, and... Uh, you know, so I could I could listen to them at any time. That's that's what podcaster is. Do you have any uh, additional? Right now, does the audio and the video podcasts? That's correct. I said mm-hmm. I, we haven't used it for the video podcast, just for audio. Do you have any other plans for it? Is do you plan to do anything else with it to branch out with it any in the future? Well, you know, I use it for audio mainly. I don't watch too many podcasts to begin with. Mm-hmm. If I pod you know video podcast i'll watch them in my house on my tv yeah Uh, so i built it for audio podcasts um i don't really i haven't really had any plans to to branch out anywhere else with it i've been thinking of how to incorporate maybe live video or other recorded videos or music into it which we definitely could but nothing like that is in place right now well it's it's working well enough that it's one of if it's not broke (laughs) don't fix it right Pretty much. It's it's working well for me, and uh, I have a lot of users using it. I have about uh, probably about 4,000 people using it wow. on a uh, daily, daily basis. 4,000? Uh, wow, that's yes. pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, it's quite a large number, and it's, it's not huge, but it's way more than what I designed it to use. You basically designed it for yourself to make it easier for you. I designed it for myself. So what happened, I designed it for myself at the beginning. It was very simple. It just had my feeds, and they were hard-coded in, and I could listen to, to my podcasts. And then uh, and then my wife wanted to listen to it. So I had to build in some sort of um, um, login for it mm-hmm. so that she could log in and I could log in. And we both logged in, and then both of us, you know, once my podcasts weren't hard-coded into it, had a hard time adding podcasts to it. So then it branched out to a podcast directory, which is fairly big now. We have about 6,000 podcasts in the podcast directory. Anything you could find in iTunes, you could pretty much find on our podcast. One of those is Strange Uh, Love. (laughs) That's right. Um, 
it's uh, it's it's pretty cool because I didn't have to add all those podcasts in. A lot of the users that are using Podcaster, and even now they're still adding new podcasts to the directory. Pretty much any time it encounters a podcast that it doesn't know, it'll just save it for oh. users. Wow! So, so any user, any of your four thousand users that add uh, an RSS feed for a podcast then that gets automatically added to the podcaster directory exactly so once it gets added it'll uh, go out and crawl the feed it'll find out what kind of feed it is it'll grab the image you know it'll uh, grab the title and the URL and it'll put it in the directory so um, when I was playing around today on my iPhone I couldn't remember how to add an RSS feed and then I think I recall you actually have to do it on your laptop or your your computer. Can can you? I, I can't remember because obviously I went up, I played with Podcaster, downloaded a couple. It looks like you've got kind of the main page of iTunes podcast directory, and then I added Strange Love as a RSS feed and got that. But I couldn't remember exactly how I did that. Can you step us through how you add an RSS feed? Sure. There's a couple of ways you could do it. Um, you could do it fr directly from the iPhone. Um, all you have to do is log into Podcaster, and uh, right on the top left there'll be a button that says Settings. And one of the settings is uh, to add a podcast feed. So you actually have to type in the entire feed URL, and you click Add, and it gets added to your list, and it goes into the directory. The other way to add it is to go to your computer, and what you do is you actually export uh, your podcast list from iTunes and it becomes an OPML file which you could then import into um, Podcaster and then you have your full list of podcasts right into Podcaster. Oh, so so I can actually, oh cool, so I can export the OPML and import it into Podcaster. I've never tried that. That would be very cool. Yeah, and it, it's really convenient for people that are just switching over to Podcaster or that are new to Podcaster. So they just go in, they right-click on Podcasts in iTunes, and they export their podcast list, and then they import it into Podcaster. So that OPML file, uh, you could get it from a lot, of, uh, a lot of podcast catchers online. So it makes it nice because you could import without having to add every single feed individually. Wow, yeah. yeah I've, I've gone from um, when I first got into listening to podcasts i got into uh well, i tried the yahoo client because i didn't really like itunes and then i um moved over to um uh uh juice the uh whatever that open source project was and that was nice and light and, and then since i got the iphone of course i had to <laughs> then go back to itunes but i was really excited about um podcaster uh, because I'd rather put more, more, uh, more stuff uh, on that rather than just fill up, fill up the storage with podcasts and wait for the syncing. So I, uh, I actually, uh, I have yet another question, and that is with all the questions uh, about tonight. the about the technology. Um, so you add an RSS. So you're kind of the RSS podcatcher, but then you point back to the original stream. And it looks like then you launch QuickTime to stream. Can you step us through the process of how after you add a podcast and then you select to listen to a podcast, how that works on your iPhone or your touch? Sure. Well, I have a lot of – I have a couple of back-end programs that constantly run, that constantly crawl the feeds, checking for new podcasts. And I have a large database that keeps all the podcasts because – it would be a shame to, to hit up every podcast feed every time somebody wanted to listen to a podcast. So what happens is you add a podcast feed, it gets added to your list, and it starts being crawled. And it depends how many people listen to it and how often they go to it is how often it gets crawled. But uh, after it gets crawled, we look for all the new items in it, and uh, the details of the item get saved into our database. So basically, when you go on to Podcaster and you pull up a podcast, it'll look in our database for the most recent item. It'll have the feed URL in there as well as the MP3 file or whatever you're linking to, and it'll point to it. And uh, 
once you hit the play button, the iPhone's got a nice built-in, uh, you know, quick time player that launches automatically. And uh, unfortunately, they did take away some of the JavaScript features, so there's no way for me to tell how long you've been listening to a podcast, how much of it you've played. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I can't say, you know, you only listen to 15 minutes of this podcast, and I could, I can't bring you back to that point. But at least I could give you the option to listen to the whole podcast. Yeah, I noticed that, that that would be the difference between having it downloaded and listening to it on the player versus streaming. Versus versus streaming, right? Yeah, that's one of the things. But I don't I don't think it's such a big deal considering, you know, if anybody's like me, I usually listen to the whole podcast in one in one shot. Or you can actually just look at your you know, where you left off on the because the stream shows you the the time. So So you you started this after you got the iPhone, obviously, and since you created it for the iPhone. How long did you have the iPhone before you realized that this was something that you were going to need? Well, I think I got the iPhone in December of 2007, and I launched Podcaster in January of 2007. So it's probably about a month or before 2008. I realized. I think, 2008, I'm sorry. I think you got your iPhone the same time, I, around the same time I got mine. I got mine I think for it was a, Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, it was like uh, it was five or six months after it launched. I got it. I couldn't afford it right away, and mm-hmm. then it went down to four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And so I had to get it. So I actually had to get two. So I have two iPhones. You know, one for me, one for my wife. Yeah, we we are also a two iPhone uh, household. I got <laughs> I got an iPhone for Christmas, and then a few months later, my husband's um, Palm Trio is that what they're called? Yeah, mysteriously died. <laughs> <laughs> He swears that he thinks it was going to burn up. I just think he really needed an iPhone. Um, but when the iPhones came out, were you, you know, I know you said you couldn't afford it, but were you, want, were you ready to jump on it? Was it something that you wanted as soon as it came out? Because I remember when, when it first came out, I thought how amazingly ridiculous it was that people were standing in line to pay, what was it five or six hundred dollars? Oh uh, yeah, it was it was six hundred dollars. You know, I wanted the iPhone ever since I heard uh, Steve Jobs give the keynote back. I guess it was WWDC mm-hmm. where he announced the iPhone, and I just got so excited. I watched the whole keynote online, and I was super excited. And I was so sad that it wasn't coming out for six more months. But then eventually, when it did come out, I I couldn't get it right away, so I, I had to wait almost a year since I since I heard of it mm-hmm. to get it. But since I've got it, I love it. It's you know, it's the best device. I, I love having it all the time with me. I uh, I so I, I even wrote a post about <laughs> why someone would stand in line and pay six hundred dollars for something that they'd never even touched before, that they couldn't even view a model of, that we didn't have anything. And I, it was not a nice post. It was I, a Metro Blogs. It was for was it? it was when I was writing yeah. for Portland Metro Blogs, and it was not. I mean, it wasn't horribly mean, but. I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. And then a few months later, a really good friend of ours brought, uh, brought his iPhone over to our house. And I had to take everything back, just sitting there and playing with it. And I'm such a vain person that the first thing I did was go to my blog. And I looked at my blog on his iPhone and I was like, oh my God, this phone is the sexiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I want to be with the phone for the rest of my life. And then I pestered uh, Dr. Normal about the iPhone until he got me one for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so my question, well, so Alex, it sounds, are you one of the Mac faithful then, or is this sort of a, the Mac development, or have you always kind of been in the Mac space? Um, no, I wasn't. I was pretty much all PCs till about three years ago, and I got myself a MacBook, a little black MacBook, and uh, after I got the MacBook, I had an iPod, then I got another MacBook. Then I got a bigger iPod. Then I got a MacBook Pro. So I couldn't help but going into the store and buying stuff. It was just it was a good experience in the stores. And so for the last three years, I've pretty much been all Mac. Although I do have to work with PCs at work. So I have a question for you. Um, last year, I had to get a new computer. And we went and we looked at MacBooks. We looked at the MacBook Pro and I wanted one, and I, I kind of oohed and awed, and I dreamed over them. But then when it came down to it at the end, I wound up getting um, a, just a, you know, a PC, a Windows machine. 
laptop. Windows Vista machine. Windows Vista machine. Everyone oh, else, boy. everyone else has an issue <laughs> with Windows Vista. It's not like I'm saying it's the best thing ever. I don't think it is, but I'm not having an issue with it. So you when like it came it. down to it, I got that because it was more cost effective, and also because I saw this cascade happening. I thought, wow, if I get a Mac then it's not going to communicate well with every other PC in our house, which means, you know, all of the all of the computers that Dr. Normal uses to record the show, the computers that he uses for film work and for music, you know, the computer that we use to pay our bills, the computer that our daughter uses. Well, that's because I built all those computers over the years. Correct. You built all these computers <laughs> over the years, and they're all on this one platform. And I was afraid that if I brought this, you know, the beautiful Mac into the house that we would then wind up spending thousands of dollars to replace every other machine in our home. Was that kind of how it went? I mean, did it kind of cascade like that for you? Well, we only had one. Actually, I had a uh, a Windows desktop and I had a Windows laptop. Mm -hmm. So since then, I've gave the Windows laptop to my dad. I no longer have it. Um, I've replaced it with a MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. And I run boot camp on the MacBook Pro when I need it to. But honestly, probably in the last two or three months, I haven't turned on boot camp at all. You know, because I like uh, boot camp is uh, it allows you to run uh, Windows, Windows that's on the Mac. Okay. There's also, but that's the native. There's also Parallels, which is an actual multitasking kernel that allows you to run the Mac OS and windows simultaneously i don't know if you've ever played with parallels but yeah i i did i i had parallels and i actually bought a copy of parallels and that was one of the few softwares that i actually paid money for but uh it uh it just slowed down my computer too much yeah you have to have some processing power i i didn't feel that it was worth running and uh i didn't see why the only reason that i turned on the windows was to develop and I really didn't need to develop within the Mac operating system, you know, while I had the Mac on. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, so right now I pretty much just develop at work. Um, if I have to develop at home, it's for the Mac. And so I just use, you know, Xcode or, or Dash Code, which are the development tools for Mac. Um, so now at my house I have an iMac. I have two Mac laptops. And I do have one Windows computer that kind of sits upstairs and never gets turned on. The poor little Windows computer gathering <laughs> dust. <Wow. laughs> um, so speaking of uh, developing, uh, did you follow the uh, the uh, uh, developers conference? Uh, what was that? A week, two weeks ago, and uh, you know the three G iPhone came out. The new. Um, uh, 2.0 operating system that we're all going to get. Um, and then the App Store was announced and some of the details. How is that all going to work? Are you Do you have an eye on some of that? Are you looking at maybe porting Podcaster to the App Store? Or do you have something else up your sleeve that you're looking at? Well, I'm, I definitely watched the, uh, the WDC conference. In, I watched it live. Well, I heard the audio live. And uh, I was definitely excited. Um, not so much about the 3G iPhone, because, well, firstly, I, I live in an area that doesn't get 3G, so mm-hmm. that doesn't excite me too much. You know, and I'm sure a lot of people live in an area that doesn't get 3G. And where is that? Um, well, I live in New Jersey. So. Yeah, it, it's a small place. Why would they have 3G in <laughs> New Jersey? Why would Jersey have 3G? Well, there's like a couple people in New Jersey, right? Like, you no, know, I think one there's or like, two, you know, 10, maybe. Four or something. <laughs> there's no major they, population there. <laughs> They have 3G New York, and it cuts out probably about 20 miles before I get to my house. Oh, so fail. <laughs> they probably will have it. But, you know, when I'm in my house, I use the Wi-Fi anyway. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that wasn't a major factor for me. The major factor was the apps and the new firmware, which I was definitely excited about. Um, so I'm not – right now I don't have uh, a native iPhone podcaster in development. And for one reason is that – Podcaster was designed so that it doesn't have to take up space for the podcasts on your iPhone. Which I like. Um, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I, I like to have all my music on it, so I don't have any space for it. Um, so I'm probably going to keep it a, uh, a web app for now. 
but I am developing it with a lot of the new features that they have, a lot of the transitions. Um, I'm using dash code to build the interface, which should make it look real sleek and easy to use. That That'll already be... looks pretty good. It, it does look good, yeah. but I think it could look better. I like uh, I like the fact that um, uh, so this was really exciting. We we seriously launched our little podcast here. <laughs> oh, this was so that cute. we that we um, that we do now on a weekly basis. Um. And so I, I found Podcaster and started playing with it. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. You know, I had got my iPhone. And so I added our podcast. And the coolest thing, I, and I think it was like for two weeks, Alex, our podcast was on your front page. So the little icon, Cammy's face, you know. And he uh, would show me once a day, look, sweetie. Yeah. Look, your face is right there. <laughs> we're on the front of Podcaster. This is great. So you feature, I think it's like three pod. I've newly added I feature podcast. four. Oh, you you feature four, yeah. And that's that's yeah. That, that's just awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, those four podcasts that are on the front are the four most recent podcasts that are added to the directory. And at at the at first when Podcaster launched, they used to change a lot more often than they do now, just because pretty much all the podcasts that are out that are popular have been added. Um. But there are other ways to, to for podcasts to get featured. I have uh, a most popular page. You know, I have a now playing page, and I really like the now playing page because it'll change throughout the day as people listen to the podcast um, inside of their podcast list. It'll actually update that page, so you know whatever people are listening to at that moment, that'll show up on that page. That's very cool. So I uh, one thing I did want to mention that I mentioned to you right before the 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 show um, that I wanted to mention I did a little experiment tonight that I had usually I've I've, I've used it over Wi-Fi and uh, I had never actually really tried a uh, podcaster over edge and um, so on the drive home um, because I, I commute about I don't know 20 miles uh, on the freeway uh, I actually fired up Podcaster and uh, grabbed last week's show um, that we did and started streaming it. And there's a couple areas on the highway that I know have um, some bad cellular handshakes uh, because if you're on a call, you'll actually the call will drop. And so I, I, I did the podcast did get interrupted um, in those areas, but once I passed by those areas, there's kind of a we go through a kind of a little mountain range in the city here in portland oregon um and uh, after after that though i mean the thing was just streaming great i, I was really really pleased and, and surprised that over edge it was just uh it was working um so and, and you know I'm, I'm moving in a vehicle which uh obviously uh when you're when you're even when you're doing data i actually did some testing on on cellular and data years ago in one of my um kind of job roles that we don't talk <laughs> about but anyway um and i know that that can be kind of tricky but uh but uh, it was nice and solid and you know if you're if you're out of range of wi-fi and at least you have edge somewhere you could still use podcaster especially if you just got time to sit down and listen to a podcast it, it's really solid yeah that's that's one of the things that post podcaster is good at it will stream over edge so most people complain that Edge loads pages very slow, but it's not that slow. It's still internet connectivity, so you'll load a podcast and over Edge, it might take you know 30 seconds, 45 seconds for the podcast to load, but they do autoplay once you click a podcast, so you just have to be a little bit patient. And it's way better than not being able to listen to a podcast at all. So pretty much what happens is I'll, you know, I'll leave work, I'm over Edge, I don't have Wi-Fi, I'll click the play button on a podcast and it'll take 30 seconds for the podcast to load but once it loads it it goes and it doesn't stop which is great and uh, in areas like you said you get a lot a couple of dropouts if you had uh, enough time for the podcast to buffer enough it'll go all the way through and it won't drop out in the areas where you lose connection but even if you do lose connection you just have to be a little patient with it 
and it will when it gets connection back it will start streaming at the same spot um, I noticed that a couple of times if I hit the play button when it stops playing it'll go back to the main screen where you hit the play button but if I don't hit the play button and I, I kind of just give it a little bit of time to get the connection back it'll just start right back up so it, it's pretty cool it'll stream right over edge and that's one of the good parts so if you try to pause it, if you try to stop it you lose where you are and you have to start over again but if you're just having a buffering problem it keeps on going just like the little train that can <laughs> that's right it'll it'll keep going and uh... even if it drops out almost uh, i'd say that ninety percent of the podcasts that i listen to stream fine over edge um, of course video podcasts don't stream over edge they're just there's just too much data there for them to stream over edge but all audio podcasts should work over edge yeah i think it's i think it's great that you have the video um, podcast capability but i think the real charm of it the real usefulness of it comes from the audio podcasts being able to grab yeah. those down yeah you know, i always figured if uh, people are driving or walking or running or riding their bike they're not watching a video podcast. Or they They're, shouldn't be. <laughs> or driving in the car 60 miles on their way home. Even though I so, really would like to catch the latest um, Cranky Geeks, but, you know, what what the hey. Hey, and even Cranky Geeks has an audio podcast, so a lot of the video podcasts exactly. put out an audio podcast. Exactly. And uh, Cranky Geeks is one of those things you got to sit down and concentrate on, and, you know, if you, if you want to watch it, you can watch it, but... Then again, it's not really a video podcast. No, yeah. you know, it doesn't need to be. Although they're sitting around. Yeah, you know, they're sitting around and talking, and it's kind of fun to look at their faces while they're talking, but it's not really a video podcast where you lose a lot if you don't watch the video. Gosh, what other podcasts can I think of that are <laughs> just like that, that maybe <laughs> stream on Ustream, for example? Yeah, I wish I could see what our viewers were saying right now, but... Not a whole I lot. I have no connection. <laughs> Not a whole lot. <laughs> I have no... My internet connection has been taken we're, away. We're experimenting with hostage. a new camera system tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Like, so you know, so, somebody mentioned in the chat room about the iPhone not having a front-facing camera. That's right. But, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't think that's a big design flaw. I don't really see myself sitting there on my iPhone video chatting with somebody while looking at them. You know, um, I, I kind of disagree because uh, I, I saw, you know, they had that, you know, in big quotes, right, that leak um, right before the, the conference started. What is the new iPhone supposed to have a front-facing camera? Well, that was, that, there was a leak and there was a layout of, some, of an ad and it, it showed uh, iChat, mm -hmm. which is the Apple, um, uh, you know, uh, video chat uh, application. And um, they suggested that the new 3G iPhone would have a, a iChat application, which would require it to have a front-facing camera, right? Interesting. I would assume that a front-facing camera on an iPhone would yeah. be for someone even more vain than I am. Well, I, I think it would be a powerful... I, I think ultimately, over time, it would be a very powerful thing. And I think <laughs> that... Uh, you know, I, I mean, there's a lot to do in the technology, so it doesn't surprise me that it's not there. But maybe the next next iPhone, you know, I, I mean, I could really see people being able to podcast or, I mean, you know, we're using Ustream right now. That's a pretty powerful application. People seem to really like to be able to fire up a camera and stream. Um, there's a lot of not only just YouTube and 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 videos that are posted, but streaming has come back in the um in vogue because i think we all have you know high speed connections now and i i could see where where something a platform like the iphone would be powerful i mean i don't know that's my opinion i, just, um, I don't feel certainly nothing that's needed today but, i don't feel the need to stream live from my telephone <laughs> but i can again i was telling alex earlier i could fire up a ustream on my uh asus epc and and fire up the camera and 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 start streaming there too, and say so. let everyone watch us assemble a tiki bar in our backyard exactly <laughs> so i don't, I don't you know, know how you feel about that but well uh first of all if there are a couple of apps that i've seen that i don't know if they're going to come out in the app store but they do 
stream live video right from the iPhone with the front facing camera. They don't they don't stream your face. You can't uh, you know chat with somebody while they're looking at your face, but they do stream whatever the camera's pointing from, at from from um, the iPhone camera. So couldn't you just turn from the, the iPhone, iPhone around? Yeah. I guess you could turn the <laughs> iPhone around and have them look at your face, but then you won't see you. That was another problem that I thought would be with a front facing camera is that if it's front facing, you can't really take pictures with it. And although the camera is not great on the iPhone, I do have a lot of situations where I don't have a camera, so I want to take pictures with the iPhone. Well, the reason the reason I, I, I suggest that streaming would be interesting um, is that I've noticed that a lot of people are taking pictures from their iPhone and then posting them immediately. Um, I still have yet to do that and, you know... Even our, though the little media chick yes, sent him it's our wonderful friend, instructions. Media chick has kept sending me the link saying, look, all you have to do, I just have to have the time to do it, to log in and, and post pictures. But, um, And I know I could have done that with my trio back in the day, six, um, three months ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> How but, quickly we convert. But, you know, vi- I mean, it, it's interesting, video or, or just being able to, what I find is weird is that on the trio, uh, so I, I come from a mobile platform perspective. I come from the Palm um, mm-hmm. platform, which I've used for over 10 years because, you know, it was kind of the original mobile platform. And um, on the Palm, on the trio, you had everything. You had a video recorder. You had a camera. Absolutely not not even as good as the iPhone camera. Um and uh you know recording and all of that so there were some things that, there were things that kept me from getting on the iphone right away because of the limitations but i'm definitely finding especially finding by discovering apps like podcaster that there's a lot of folks that are developing for the iphone and that will will increase its capabilities and for example, I think Podcaster is a really good example of that. And I think that um, I think the iPhone will be the next platform. I mean, the one thing about Palm, people who use the Palm pa- platform, is they had tons and tons and tons of applications. I mean, there was there were applications for everything for Palm. I think there were too many applications for Palm. Yeah. It's too easy to get it bogged down. I think. Oh no, no, it was yeah. a pretty tight operating system but i think the iphone will be will be that platform uh moving forward you know i i just hope that they're good apps because for a while i did have my iphone jailbroken and there's hundreds of apps that are in the jailbroken iphone store we'll call it but you know i didn't i didn't find <laughs> and any the url of them really for that store is <laughs> <laughs> you know you jailbreak your phone you get installer.app but i just didn't really find any of those apps useful and we have to say here, the Strange Love podcast does not jailbreak their iPhones. Nor do we condone the jailbreaking of iPhones. <laughs> eh, not that just, we care, but uh, we just don't want stuff to crash. No, I like. Let's just say my my phone's stable. not jailbroken at this point. That's nice. Um, it's almost like housebreaking a puppy. <laughs> you know, I just like I like the way Apple designed it. It's perfect the way they designed it. They gave me the exact features that I wanted, and I, I like the features that they give me, so pretty much whatever you know, Mr. Jobs gives us, I'll be happy with. Yeah, He's it, it, so far made the right decision. Except for the one thing, and I think if you jailbreak your iPhone, you, you do get this. I think the one thing, and this is where the trio, again, I really liked with my Palm, you do not get a- direct access to the flash storage. And that really... Well, you can remove from it, but you can't add to it. Is that... Well, you just don't get direct access as far as um, being able to copy files or, or using the flash storage okay that's that's true but i mean yeah. i pick up my keys and you know i have like three or four flash drives on my keys yeah i know i know so is there really a need for it and if you i, if, I don't know and if you're like me and you got an epc before you got the iphone yeah i think that just bothers yeah. you because you came straight from the trio and you were used to doing <laughs> that I, I i would stick my two gig sd card in and copy documents and stuff and you know yeah, that's never bothered me. I know so, it. I mean, <laughs> Nothing bothers me. I, I'm looking for some of the games that are coming up, but I mean, really, the only game that we've seen so far is Monkey Ball, 
and Spore. Oh, Monkey Ball. And I love Monkey Ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I've had about enough Monkey Ball on my Wii. Well, you'll be able so. to download it soon. Yeah, I kind of would rather play Monkey Ball on my Wii than I, you know, we, we have the Wii too, and, and we play it on the Wii, and I'd rather with a big projector, and I think it'd be more fun there than it would be on my iPhone. And uh, somebody mentioned uh, online that, you know, the, the viewing angle on the iPhone isn't great. I mean, it's good, but if you turn it at an angle, you lose a lot of visibility and you lose a lot of the screen. And so if you're holding your iPhone and you're tilting it while you're playing Monkey Ball, mm -hmm. either they have to make it real sensitive so that you don't have to tilt it a lot, which gives you hard controls, yeah, or you'll be losing a, a lot of the screen. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not... I'm not really looking forward. You know, I'm not that excited about it. I'm looking forward to exchange, though. Yeah. Because then I'll finally be able to use it for work. Yeah, I think that'll be the big... Uh, that was obvious. I think that was ultimately the big announcement at the developers' conference, right? Is that, you know, because everyone... I mean, everyone's carrying these things around. I know in my... I work for one of those big places. <laughs> and, you know, everyone's <laughs> carrying around an iPhone... Everyone's, you know, waiting to get exchange um, so they can put in the corporate environment. So the momentum is there. I'm going to ask the dumbest question ever asked. What's exchange? I'm not even joking. I'm, I don't know. I, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I don't have to go work somewhere. Outlook. Oh, it's out. Why don't you just say Outlook is called exchange? Well, because it's more than Outlook because you get push email right. and you get push calendar mm -hmm. and you get push contacts. But it's the same general idea. Well, it, here's the it's thing. It's just on get, steroids. Well, I could get email right now, which I do get my work email, mm -hmm. but I don't get my work calendar mm -hmm. and I don't get my work contacts. Mm -hmm. So it makes it hard. Like I had to kind of find back doors. Mm -hmm. Well, I did find backdoors for the calendar. Well, you can you can context. you can through iTunes sync, and I do this right now because calendar is a big deal for me. Uh, you you load up iTunes on your corporate computer, and you do sync your Outlook calendar. You have to do a sync process. It's not a push or anything, but you you actually can sync sync your calendar to your to your iPhone. You could sync. So I mean, it, yeah. you know, a lot and of you people do have contacts found as well. You know, I haven't I haven't played with contacts. Maybe I'll try that tomorrow because yeah. yeah, I haven't it, found a way to do contacts. Yeah, it's it's just it's just uh, yeah. You just sync uh, your contacts with your your Outlook, but you have to. But load, then you have. It's but then you have to sync it with your work computer. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. So I mean, it's kind of a bummer to have yeah. to yeah. not sync it with your home computer. And the difference is in the BlackBerry and. Palm trio spaces that they do have push email with exchange. Yeah. We have some big corporate. Blackberry fans that yeah. listen to the show that just they pink puffy heart their Blackberries. Yeah. So. So, I mean, once this comes along, I think a lot more people, I know that the IT department in my company is going to switch over to, to iPhones. Not the whole company, but at least the IT department to begin with. I and it's only because of the exchange support. I think that a lot more people will probably be open to switching over to the iPhone once uh, you're not so limited as to your provider. I've heard a lot of people, at least in Portland, there's been a lot of uh, complaint that it's, you know, their way or the highway. So, Well, you know, if I could switch to Exchange and... Uh actually start using my phone for work then maybe i could get him to pay for it oh that's always nice <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> well um before we go is there anything else you want to add is there anything you want to throw in um no just you know everybody go to podcaster.fm on their uh iphones if you want to stream podcasts and uh Check out twitter.com slash iPhone podcaster if you want to follow me on podcaster on Twitter. Yay. <laughs> I always like it when people add their Twitter name at the end. I think that's actually, <laughs> I think you're only the second person who's done that. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I started following uh, iPhone podcaster on Twitter the moment I got podcaster. So, so that's www.podcaster.fm, right? That's correct. Yeah, it's a great app. Alex, I'm a huge fan. 
Great. Thank you. It was wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for staying up late. And thank your lovely wife for letting you stay up so late to be on the show with us. (laughs) Oh, no problem. I know she's in the other room listening to us right now. (laughs) All right. Well, you have a nice sleep and a good day tomorrow. And thank you so much. Okay. Good night. Good night, everybody. 